Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a weird weather pattern that'll be continuing across the United States for the next seven days. And this is going to continue to bring a lot less thunderstorms to areas like the Midwest and the Northern Plains. On the flip side of things, we are going to continue to deal with a very large summer cooldown across areas that are east of the Rocky Mountains, while record-breaking heat continues across the West Coast of the United States. States. But there is reason to believe after we go into August, I do think the weather pattern is going to change a lot where we will start to see more severe weather. So in today's forecast, sort of break down everything that you need to know for the rest of July and why the weather is likely to change as we go into early August. Now we are going to begin first with what's happening across the United States. And this is the infrared imagery from last night. It gives you a pretty good representation of what's happening across the United States right now. We have a lot of showers and thunderstorms that have been happening in the south southeast for the last few days now. Yesterday, a lot of that storm activity happened around South Carolina back into Central Florida. Pretty stationary activity overall. Nothing really organized by any means. It's pretty typical summertime activity. And a lot of this can be blamed just due to the pure amount of moisture that is surging out of the Gulf of Mexico. It is just so humid in the southeast and even back into the southern plains, which is leaving a lot of areas cooler than average for this time of the year as well. Back over in the Great Plains, pretty dry off to the north, but further south in areas like Oklahoma and Texas. We've been seeing a ton of rain in these areas and actually Dallas Fort Worth at the airport received a record breaking 1.85 inches of rain yesterday which is a daily record there and we don't see rain like that that often in the summertime in Texas so something like this does not happen very frequently. Now it does happen it's just not something that we are accustomed to during the summer which is keeping a lot of areas 5 to 10 degrees below average across almost the entire state of Texas. Now the tropics are pretty quiet right now we'll talk maybe a little bit more about that later in the forecast but the tropics are still quiet I do not expect anything to form here in the next five to seven days in the Gulf or even in the Atlantic Ocean now let's talk more about the weather pattern that's going to be impacting the United States over the next seven to ten days and we're going to begin by looking at the jet stream which gives us an idea of what's happening with different troughs and ridges basically what's dominating in terms of the weather pattern and as of right now we have a large ridge back over in the southwest United States in the upper levels and what what this is basically doing is acting like a wall and what I mean by that is that no storms are really able to enter into the United States and one of the biggest things with this is that any storms that do try to enter the United States are really just going to go into Canada instead because that wall is basically going to be preventing any major activity from entering the country and what I'm basically saying is that we don't have any organized severe weather producers that are going to be entering the country over the next seven days that's good news for anybody that's in like the Midwest or in the Northern Plains because during this time of the year it's much more common to see something like that so as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday just kind of notice how that ridge just kind of sits there it will start to weaken a little bit and by the time we get closer to Thursday we might have a little storm that dips out of Canada and impacts the Northeast might get some sort of small severe weather event out of that but nothing organized this is really the trough though that we'll have to watch for as we go into the very late week so Friday and then eventually into the weekend because this could actually bring some more significant threat of severe weather depending on where it goes if it stays over in like Canada for example the more higher likelihood of there being severe weather will be in Canada but we also could see some severe weather in areas like North Dakota and Minnesota and that could eventually drop into the Midwest so it's something that we'll have to monitor for but again I don't see an imminent threat right now for a major storm here in the United States and then once we go into next week things will be pretty calm for the most part I think as we go into the beginning of next week but once we get closer to the very end of July I think we're going to get another large-scale trough that really will start to weaken meaning that we will likely start to get some more big severe weather events in the northern plains the midwest and then eventually maybe even the ohio valley and the northeast as we go into early august so a lot of things are coming but it looks again for right now quiet at least until the weekend let's talk a little bit more about that severe weather potential just in general over the next really seven to ten days this is the instability which is essentially storm fuel we're not really gonna have much of that we could get like a little localized threat for severe weather today back over in Maryland but nothing really looks you know crazy there today maybe a very low tornado risk wouldn't even rule that out once we go to Tuesday and to Wednesday there will continue to be a lot of storm fuel there in the Gulf Coast states and as well as in the southeast like Florida for example so expect plenty of thunderstorms over the next really seven days or so we'll likely start to get a more organized threat of severe weather back up in Canada and as well as the northern plains as we go into Friday again does not look to be anything really beyond wind hail and maybe an isolated tornado and then by Saturday into Sunday this 
will start to dive a bit further back down to the south into like the Midwest and the Northern Plains. We could eventually see some severe weather trickle down into areas like Illinois or Wisconsin by maybe Sunday or Monday. But again, I don't see anything that looks super, super concerning at this point. Nothing like what we saw at the derecho last week, for example. Now let's put this into more simplistic terms and go through the future radar for the next seven to 10 days. So again, right now we're gonna be dealing with lots of showers and thunderstorms today, anywhere from the Maryland area and Pennsylvania back into Texas and as well as the Southeast. Some showers and storms possible back over in the upper Midwest, but nothing really too concerning there. Tuesday, we'll be watching for some more showers and storms, but they will start to become a bit more isolated in nature as we go into Tuesday across the Southeast and the East Coast. By Wednesday, it's gonna continue to stay active here across the East Coast, a little bit more of an uptick, I think, for Wednesday in terms of storm activity. By Thursday, basically the same story all week for the East Coast and the Southern Plains. One thing I do wanna point out is that we will have a surface-based ridge back over in the Midwest and the Northern Plains. This is basically a surface-based wall. The other wall that I showed you in the upper jet stream, that is what's gonna be showing you the wall that's preventing any large-scale activity. Anything near the surface is gonna be prevented by this high-pressure system, keeping areas drier and in most cases warmer across areas like the Midwest. Then once we go into Friday into Saturday, that ridge is just gonna continue to sit up there and it'll actually be dominating across the Northeast and the Midwest. This will prevent most storm activity near the surface probably until Saturday in the United States from that low pressure system in Canada. And then once we go into Sunday into Monday, we could see some scattered severe weather anywhere from like South and North Dakota back into areas like Wisconsin and maybe Northern Michigan. But again, those specific details remain a bit uncertain since we are still talking about something that is about a week out from now. Now the temperatures across the United States are gonna really continue to stay where they are right now. I don't see any significant changes for the next really five days or so as a cold air mass will continue to sit across the Midwest and the Southern Plains with a warm air mass back over in the Southwest and as well as back through Canada, where we will be seeing the potential for record breaking temperatures, especially in the Northern Plains by Thursday. One thing I do wanna point out is back over in Boise, Idaho, we actually had a temperature of 108 degrees yesterday. That is just unbelievable for that area. Once we go on a Thursday into Friday, that warmer air will start to trickle into the Midwest. So be mindful of that. The temperatures will start to warm up a little bit by the weekend. And then once we go into next week, that warm air really starts to usher back into the Northern Plains and as well as the Northeast. On the flip side of things, things are gonna continue to stay nice back over in the Southern Plains and the Southeast, or at least nice for this time of the year. It's not really that nice because it's just so humid and hot to begin with, but uh, at least it'll be a little bit cooler than normal for this time of the year. Temperatures for today are gonna still be in the 80s for most of the country, some 100s on the West Coast. Once we go to Tuesday afternoon for high temperatures, again, just beautiful weather really across the Midwest and the Northeast, even in the Southeast and the Central and Southern Plains. I really don't have any complaints myself for this type of weather. Aside from the humidity, that's really gonna be the kicker. Heat indices will be much higher, meaning that you will be sweating more as well. Once we go into Wednesday, it's again, pretty much the same story all week long. We'll start to warm back up as we go into Friday across the Northern and Central Plains, but it should be a pretty gradual increase of temperatures. Rainfall accumulation over the next seven to 10 days looks a little bit like this, back over in the East Coast and the Southeast, and as well as back through Texas, that is where the bulk of the rain will fall. Some scattered showers and storms will lead to some low end rainfall rates back over in the Midwest. And then once we go into next weekend and into early next week, really gonna be the same old sort of story, but rainfall will start to increase a bit more back over in the Midwest as we go into the very end of July and eventually into early August. Cloud Prediction Center on board with this forecast, temperatures above average for the northern tier of the country as we go into the very last week of July and below average temperatures in Texas will continue. Above average precipitation expected for the Midwest back through the Southern Plains and the Southeast. Below average precipitation is in the forecast for the Northeast and as well as back over in California as well as in Nevada. Now I do wanna quickly talk about the tropics. We're not really gonna talk much about this in general probably for the next five to seven days because there's nothing big coming. But one thing I will be telling you about a little bit more probably as we get closer to August is that we might be seeing a tropical wave back over in the Lesser Antilles. For the time being, we have this ridge that is going to be sitting back over to the north of the Lesser Antilles. This is what we call the Bermuda High. And this will end up steering some tropical waves into areas like the Lesser Antilles. Now, we have a lot of Saharan dust out there, so it's pretty dry. But I think as we get closer to around maybe Tuesday of next week, so around July 30th, we might have a tropical wave that's brewing. And if this can become more organized, we might get some sort of hurricane out of this or a tropical storm. But the odds of that right now are extremely low. And if this even happens, does remain very uncertain. So just stay tuned to the channel. We'll keep you posted with the latest if anything does change here or develops with it. I do want to
to mention, by the way, this will probably be our only forecast for the next four to five days, unless something does change with the weather, meaning that there's some sort of big weather event happening. I don't see anything big really happening until at least maybe Friday or Saturday. So right now, next forecast scheduled for Friday, but we might have something this week. And the reason why is because I'm on vacation with Connor Croft for the next four days. Uh, we'll be at Disney World, so we're kind of relaxing, just kind of enjoying ourselves as it's been a very busy, severe weather season. With that said, we will be back to the weather studio on Friday. But again, if something does come up that I need to make a video for, we'll have the studio with us, uh, at least the mobile studio, so I'll be able to make a video if we need one. But at this point, it does not look like we'll have to have one for the next really four or five days. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video, and we'll keep you posted with the latest.